What's up, everybody? So today we're going to be uh, watching some AFT09 gameplay, and this does end up being a pretty good showcase for what this vehicle can do. Um, the 09 is not... I don't know. It's everything a guided missile carrier should be, but that also means it's kind of a niche vehicle. And what I mean by niche is that you need good positions for this thing to really work effectively. Like, you need uh, pieces of elevation that you can use. Stuff like that. Um, because you really need to be able to poke the launchers out from beside cover. But if you have those positions available, this thing is just great at using them. Right? Like, it's not... It's not going to be held back as much by uh, by some of the features that other stuff has. Like, the M901, you can actually destroy the entire vehicle through the launcher, which is not ideal. Um, you can destroy it through the launcher with a Sabo, to clarify. You can destroy this through the launcher, but you have to use, like, EFS or a missile. Um, and if you have something like the Mephisto, the Mephisto doesn't have fantastic gun depression, or gun, quote-unquote, doesn't have fantastic launcher depression, so it's not always the easiest to shoot over terrain. Um, this thing, on the other hand, does actually have pretty good launcher depression. It has thermal imaging. Uh, unless you're firing something with a good explosive filler, you can't actually kill it, like, through the launcher. And you also have thermal, so you can just spot this uh, guy over here in the SVG. Um, one of the big drawbacks, things to hold it back, same thing that holds every missile carrier back. Uh, you can't fire your missiles while moving. Spot this guy right away. Um, you can't fire your missiles while moving. Your missiles are slower than enemy Sabos or even EFS rounds. Um, the other thing that really holds it back, like, you don't have any kind of machine gun or anything to, like, shoot down obstacles. And you'll see that kind of come up once where I just have to burn a missile to hit somebody uh, because I don't have, like, a machine gun or anything. This is this Leopard L1 A44. It took me a minute to figure out what the hell hit me from that direction. But yeah, so you see we have plenty of, like, vertical cover here. This is the position you want for this vehicle. Um, now, I'm repairing in front of this BMD-4 because I want him to know there's an enemy there. And, what'll, and yeah, he, he found out that there's a Leopard there. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Like, I guess he knew there was a Leopard there, he just didn't react fast enough. Or, this, is a, this is kind of an awkward fight because I don't have a great position to peek, but neither does a Leopard. Like, if the Leopard loaded a Heat FS, he might be able to take me, but I'm not even sure that he knows that that's an option, so... Um, but overall, the AFT-09, I've heard some people talking about, like, how it's broken or needs to go up a VR. Honestly, I think it's perfectly fine where it is. Um, if you have good positions, it's great. If you don't have good positions, it's really rough. Uh, the inability to fire while moving just limits your ability in urban environments so much. Um, one thing you will notice, this does come up in this game, it's not that the AFT-09 is durable per se, but if the enemy isn't firing something with explosive filler, like, you don't have any armor. Like, you're not going to generate spalling on your own. Oh yeah, here we get to see this cobra without a tail killing people. Always great. I love it when they do that. It's like my favorite feature of attack helicopters in this game. And I'm trying to keep an eye on this Leo too, because like, the Leo's in, in this like, super awkward spot where I'm not really, like, I can't immediately engage him. Like, I don't have a good plan. So I'm just kind of like, hmm, I don't hope he pushes me. Because if he doesn't push me, I don't really have a, a great solution to this. Um, one of the advantages, though, is that, like, the Leo coming over a hill has a very difficult time disabling the AFT-09. The AFT-09 does not have the same problem. Really, the AFT-09 could just shoot the front of a Leo's freaking turret, which is what we're going to see about this encounter. And I have four shots, obviously. Like, the four ready-to-fire missile helps. Fire that one a little early, the Leo's like, ha 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 ha. And now we disable his cannon breach and kill his commander. I definitely should have driven forward in this. This is me being completely dumb. <laughs> this is also awkward. He's, like, machine gunning me. So, this thing definitely can be penned by rifle machine guns. But, spoiler, it cannot be pinned by uh, rifle count. Uh, it can't be pinned by rifles, but it can definitely be pinned to like 50 cows of dish, because uh, if that was an Abrams or something, I would not have done that. <laughs> but it's like, it's a Leo. He's got like 7.62 machine guns. He can't really do anything to us. So, we have two kills. This ends up being a bit of a longer map, because my team kind of folds. 
to an awkward degree. And this is where I realized my team is just not doing well on the other side of the map. So I'm like, what exactly is the best possible solution here? Like, we have a good position to cover B, but if the enemy's not using B, then it doesn't matter. So our solution is to make the enemy use B, if that makes any sense. Like, we want to make B relevant, and the way we do that is by decapping B and see if we can get the enemy to come to us, and also just harassing them in spawn. Like, like we have to prod the bear because we need to draw attention away from our teammates who are kind of getting their asses kicked. So, that's kind of the plan when you see me, like, sneak it up. I'm like, if I can get a shot on something, great. But really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to slowly, like, creep my way up, try to not get ambushed, and you know, hopefully don't get strafed by a plane. We do actually end up getting strafed by this plane, like, twice. It doesn't really do much to us. That's not to say that you should just invite planes to strafe you. Like, this thing is incredibly weak to it, but... Uh, like, if all they have are 50 cals, like, again, this thing just doesn't generate spalling. So, like, low-caliber machine guns, even though they can technically go through their armor, they're just poking holes. And I believe this is where it gets this Geppard. Yeah. Like, we see this Geppard, and we're like, alright, we'll just wait for him. We don't have a good shot. And then our friend decides that he wants to set us on fire. Whatever. He was like, ha ha ha, I've set you on fire, and I'm like, this is inconvenient. I think he killed, like, one of our crew. But again, it's like poking holes, right? The Gepper, though, somehow saw none of that interaction, which is very unobservant. So we just obliterate him with a missile. So we're three kills, repairing our damage. And at this point, like, it's becoming very obvious our team is just not doing well A-side. And in fact, our team is doing so poorly A-side that, like, the entire push is A-side for the enemy. So it's like, all right, we have to pull people B-side or we're going to get screwed here. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's kind of our only option. So, finish up repairing. Up to three kills, not too bad. Um, the 12 missiles on the AFT-09 are usually not an issue unless you're having to expend a lot of in round missiles per enemy, or unless you're just having a really good game. Um, we do enough running a little low on missiles by the end of this, but, yeah, like, you have four missiles per launcher and you have three reloads, so 12 missiles total. It's not the worst. Uh, one thing I will say about the AFT-09, you really have to remember the firing sequence. So the firing sequence is far left, far right, inner left, inner right. And you can see the far left is already expended, so the far right is going to be the one to shoot next. This is important if you're peeking the launcher around corners. Now you notice we're just running over the point. Like, we're trying to get the enemy's attention, but like we have no hope of capping it. So it's like... Like, technically, this could give enemies, the enemy spawn points, but at the end of the day, we really just need to, like, get this, uh, get our, get our board state in order and get the enemy's attention away from A, because we are just hemorrhaging too many resources in that direction. And now you're about to see an example of both A, the weird durability, but also B, the, uh... The fact that I had to waste my first missile just to break down that fence. Um, and then I had to spend two to kill him. So that was three missiles for a single kill. But you also see the weird durability. Like, the shell went inside, in one side of the vehicle, out the other. I think it damaged, like, the radiator or something stupid. And, like, killed a crew member. So it's like, we got four crew members, so we're still, like, basically good. Um, but it is very noteworthy that, like, sometimes you will get those scenarios. And now we're still repairing. No, we're repairing the transmission. That's what happened. And this guy, all he can see is our turret, so he decides to shoot at us. I don't know where I was going with that first shot, but, like, the second shot absolutely clocks him. I was like, like, dude, if all you can see is our turret and you don't have a high explosive round, like a missile or, like, a uh, heat FS, do not take that shot. You're not going to do anything. Like, that is one of the features I love about this, is, like, you can poke the launcher out and, like, the enemy can annoy you, but unless they're pretty clever about what rounds they use, they can't actually kill you. And I think that actually knocked that dude out of the match, so that was pretty good. So we're up to five kills. The Centauro kill, you could argue whether or not we should have gotten that. Um, at the end of the day, this thing is tricky to kill if all you load is darts. The VCC, we definitely should have gotten that kill because that guy was just an idiot. Like, you should not... 
If all you can see is the turret and you have an auto cannon, just go somewhere else. This is where I'm like, oh, somebody's on the point. Amazing. I don't. Somehow somebody got to the point without seeing. I actually do see this guy, but I don't have a good shot, so I'm like, mm, I have two missiles. Let's be patient. Somehow this guy, this Type 74G, got onto point without noticing the firefights I had with Satoru or the BCC or seeing me. So it's like, I'm not really sure what the hell happened there, but okay. So we're backing up because the launcher is in the back, so. And we are shooting, yeah. But I have to back up a little bit more because you see it's inner left. Oh, there you go, 74G. I have exactly one missile left. Which is not the best possible scenario to be in because I can't reload. Like, I can't drive all the way to A and cap it a reload. I can't cap B. Like, like we're, this is basically our last missile for the match. And once we spend it, we're out of the vehicle. So I'm like, kind of hoping we get a kill. And I'm like, you know, there are some aircraft up. So... Because there are some aircraft up, I decided to get under this nice little tree in a minute. Or when I like hear an aircraft engine, I'm like, alright, let's get under this tree and see if we can like avoid getting strafed. Because I have two crew left and one of them's like yellow. <laughs> so, like hiding under the tree, good strategy to avoid being strafed. The awkward part is this fence. And this is where you see like the other issues. Like I have one missile, I have no machine gun. And this M41 just drives up and I'm like, oh Christ. <laughs> Like, I don't have a good strategy to engage him because I have to move, and if I move, that draws attention to myself. And if I draw attention to myself, he's just going to shoot me. And because, at this point, I have two crew, so, like, he doesn't have to get all that lucky to kill me. So it's like, I figure he was like, hey, unless something weird happens, like, ho like I'm just going to stay still, hopefully he drives by me. But, yeah, I had no optimism whatsoever that this would actually work, and I'm like, shh, be very quiet. Like, I can't shoot through the fence. I have one missile. Yeah, there it is. That's an M41, though. M41s have 50 cals. This thing is allergic to 50 cals. It tends to break out and dead very quickly. But we're not done with the match, because obviously we have a lot of spawn points. Not enough for a nuke, because that was only six kills. But, you know, certainly enough spawn points for another really fun vehicle. Oh, this is the wing long. Yeah, so... The site stabilization on the wing long is like really weird at this point in the game. Like it doesn't quite, like if you're on console, it doesn't quite work correctly. So like these two hellfires just completely whiff. Speed that up. Like this is just me being an idiot. Well, they don't completely whiff. Like I locked onto him. Unfortunately, it was awkward because he was sitting right by his own wreck. So because he's sitting by the wreck of the other tank, the site stabilization like kind of walked onto the area like below him a little so all i could really do is track him it was really dumb and i'm like is there anything i should do it's like nah we'll just j out it's fine we have more than enough spawn points so i wasn't worried about that but we're getting in the helicopter next so this is the good old z11 wa this is a fantastic helicopter for 87 by the way um if you haven't played the this thing is a bit of a menace and the reason it's a bit of a menace and what's going to allow us to really keep this game alive is going to be these uh, the thermal imaging and these four missiles. The thermal imaging is absolutely fantastic. Like, at this battle rating, nothing gets thermal imaging as far as aircraft is concerned. So you can use the thermal imaging to pick out targets very quickly, which is, like, a lot of things in this battle rating just don't have a good answer to that. Uh, here we see the Bugli Panzer. And he, like, jinxed at just the wrong time, if memory serves. Yeah, like, it was like, he, like, stuttered a little, and I was like, god damn it. So now I'm like, fortunately, he's not moving that much. This is gonna be awful. Like, the replay does not show this well. So we're trying to dodge his missile while guiding our own, and that missile actually hits. So obviously, while we're, like, moving sideways at crazy speeds, we can, like, perfectly nail his ass. But, like, moving in a straight line while he doesn't know us, we completely whiff that one. Because <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, there's, like, at this point, I don't see enough aircraft to really be scared of them. And I don't see enough anti-air to be scared of them. So, especially when I see, like, our RF-86 is going after their F-84. So what we're doing is we're looking for... We know there's a light tank on point. He just capped it. He also just killed us. We're trying to find this stupid M-41. 
Oh, like, alright, there he is. And this is, like, another instance where it's like he stutters at just the right time. I'm not sure, like, if he saw the missile or heard something or what, but... Fortunately, he doesn't even react to that. Like, he thinks somebody fired artillery or something at him. So we actually get this uh, next kill. Like, he's just still moving in a straight line. And this time, he doesn't stutter or do anything weird, so we just obliterate him. And obviously, you have to go back and reload because we only have four missiles. And that is one of the drawbacks of this helicopter, um, even though it is kind of bonkers for its battle rating. The fact that it has to go back and reload with such frequency does get a little annoying, but eh. It is what it is. But at this point, the game is still incredibly close. We're already up to eight kills. Um, and we'll come back out. And that is an interesting view. So, again, we see a pretty clear sky. So it's like, okay, we didn't see any anti-air up. Now, the anti-air actually does end up spawning a good bit later, but yeah. Um, we, there is some anti-air up, but we don't see any anti-air up, so we're like, alright. We don't see any air up, so we can actually gain some altitude to try and get good positions for these shots. So, this is where we're like, okay, our team, we're looking for our teammates to mark out shots at this point. Because, even though we have thermals, like, there's a lot of wrecks that we have to kind of sift through. So we either have to look for moving wrecks, or we have to look for things that our teammates are marking out. Uh, yeah, what do we have for our next target? You can see I'm kind of scanning the area. It's like, do we see anything? Do we see anything? And this is where I see this guy. I was like, I saw him go under the bridge. I was like, oh, this guy's getting a missile. Like, right now. Uh, so we have a Type 16 light tank that is about to eat a missile. We also saw his friend. Like, we saw another vehicle. Yeah, that, that guy behind him. Uh, which is like the Type 60, I think. Like, we definitely saw him, we're like, okay, so there's definitely another one. And we we want to keep swinging it out, right? Like, there's not an advantage to closing the distance to a crazy degree. Like, it might help you aim the shot a little bit more, might reduce travel time. But at the end of the day, we don't want to give them the chance to, like, shoot us down. There we go. And now we're getting call-outs from our teammate. Uh, this heavy tank is requesting help with a Puma. So, we're going to see what we can do. At this point, I'm not optimistic I can kill a Puma. Uh, the Puma has a lot of protection against things like missiles, so it's not the best possible shot in the world, but we're going to see what we can do with it. So it's like, there we go. Alright, we spot him. Missiles away. And we do actually end up killing his commander, which is a little bit better than I thought we were going to do. Now, at this point, I actually thought we were out of missiles, but uh, then I realized, oh, wait, we got another missile. Go back and like finish the Puma off, but somebody else kills him, and I'm like, alright, cool. So at this point, I'm a little bit too close for comfort. I immediately see this Geffert and <laughs> fire the missile at it. But I'm also like, oh, wow, that guy's probably spawn protected. And it turns out he's totally spawn protected. So now we are running from not one, but two Gefferts because another one spawned in right behind him. And somehow we managed to do this successfully. And I'm not really sure how. Like, like they really do not like us. Understandably, of course, but... Spoiler, we don't actually end up getting any more kills for the remainder of the match. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, but 10 kills, 1 assist. We kind of end up hard carrying by pulling the attention away from our team. I think the second highest kills on our team was like 5 or something to that effect. So it wasn't anything too crazy. But uh, yeah, it's actually ended up being a pretty good game. Uh, it kind of showed off what the AFT-09 is good and bad at to an extent. Like, you have to go from position to position in order to be successful. You can't rely, like, you can't shoot and move, so you can't just rely on your reaction times. Um, sometimes you'll survive hits, but you can't count on it. Uh, you absolutely cannot survive hits from auto cannons to the hull, although you can survive them to the turret, which is what makes it really cool. Um, and overall, the missiles are incredibly powerful. 1,200 millimeters of pen, tandem warhead. They also seem to do very consistent damage. Like, I absolutely love the AFT-09, and Z11WA absolutely slaps. Like, the Chinese 87 is a fantastic lineup right now. So, uh, especially the ZAD-88A, the ZTZ-88A, great medium tank. Like, eight, Chinese 8.7 is great right now. Anyway, hope you enjoy that. Have a good day, everybody.